Have you ever wondered how you can set up your own iGate or DigiPeter if you don't have one in your area? I'm in an underserved area and I don't have any DigiPeters that I can easily reach with my HT. So my fun with APRS is very limited on what I can do over RF. As a service to myself and others in the area who might be passing through, I've set up a DigiPeter and iGate using cheap hardware that most any ham radio operator has sitting around. And with a little bit of software, it makes it work just like the expensive ones. Right now it's a temporary setup and I plan on making a permanent setup to where it'll have battery power for emergency backup and be able to use in emergency situations. The idea is that if my internet goes down, I can use my mobile station to hit my DigiPeter, which broadcasts it out much farther to other DigiPeters in the area. In this video, I'm going to focus on setting it up using just a cheap Baofeng and some software that you can download for free off the internet and just a few things I have laying around. You can replace your hardware with anything you want. I have personally used a Baofeng and my TYT TH9800 which has a 50 watt transceiver on it. Uh, both of them options have worked really well. If you're wondering, APRS stands for Automatic Packet Reporting System and is the way that ham radios use to send position reports across the world. Uh, weather reports, text messages, and so much more. In fact, you can even use APRS to send text messages to cell phones and back from cell phones as well as email. One of my favorite things to do on APRS is to partake in APRS Thursday. I've met several hams in the area that I didn't know was active and had good conversations with them. From these conversations, they've turned into invites to join in on conversations on repeaters in the area. APRS is such a fun mode of communication and I think it's a great resource for emergency situations. When you're using APRS on your radio, you are attempting usually to hit digipeters and eye gates to make it happen in a more broader scale. So your HT only works in line of sight, generally three to five miles depending on your setup. When I started in APRS, it was a little overwhelming learning what all of these different parts meant. But it's actually really simple. A digipeter is basically a repeater for these packets that are transmitted. Um, when you send out a packet, these digipeters will receive it, store it, and retransmit it to a wider area. An iGate is basically a digipeter with internet access. And that iGate can receive those packets, send it to the internet, and receive packets from the internet. So, for example, I was having a conversation with someone out of Arizona, which was only possible due to the fact that we had eye gates in both of our areas. So, eye gates is a very important part of APRS system so that we can have a global communication system. The great thing about APRS Thursday is you can actually test out how well these messages will be sent and received so you're not relying on it when it may or may not work. With my current setup, as I said earlier, I'm not able to reach out to any other DigiPeters in the area. My plan is to raise my tower though uh, because I live down in a hole now. When I raise that tower, I should be able to reach out better, but there is still a well underserved area around where I live. So although I'm using my internet connection for this iGate and I don't want to rely on that, when I raise my tower up, I should be able to reach other DigiPeters and I should be able to broadcast packets out to them. To expand on that a little bit, um, iGates are almost always helpful in any area, but it's important to understand that DigiPeters are not always necessary and can actually cause more harm than good. But in my opinion, it's good to know how to set one up anyway, so that in the future, if there's ever an emergency and you need to set up a DigiPeter for your community, then you'll already know how to do that. If DigiPeters are too close, then messages can be repeated too close to one another and it may not get as far out as it needs to be. And it can also interfere due to timing and things like that. So they're not always necessary but setting up an eye gate ensures that that message can always reach the internet even if the internet uh, down the road at the other digipeter goes down your eye gate can at least get that message out to where it needs to go the aprs is system can receive these messages multiple times for multiple people and it'll ignore the messages that it's already got and will not rebroadcast them out again and if your eye gate is able to transmit as well then if a message is coming from the internet to go to a radio, if there's no other digipeters in the area, then your iGate will be able to reach out to that person 
and send that message to them. As far as the hardware that you need, uh, it can be very basic or it can expand out a little bit depending on what you want to set up. If you want to receive only eye gate, you can use something as simple as a Baofeng with an audio cable connected to your computer. I'm going to break down what you need at a minimum for each situation. Each one of these will also require a processor such as a Windows computer or a Linux computer or Raspberry Pi. If you want to use the Raspberry Pi, I highly recommend setting up a DigiPi, which is basically an image with all this stuff already built into it. You just need to provide the radio and the audio cable. I have an extra Windows machine just laying around, so I'm going to use that for my setup today. The most basic way to set this up is just a receive only eye gate. Uh, with an eye gate, the only thing you really need is a radio and a processor and something to connect those two together such as an APRS-K1 cable for your Baofeng. If you want to set up a receive and transmit iGator or DigiPeter, you can use Vox, but it does not work well at all. I struggled and struggled to get it set up and run into a lot of issues along the way. So I highly recommend something that will automatically push the PTT or push the talk button, uh, which is possible on the Baofeng, but the Baofeng cable does not automatically push the talk. You have to use Vox for that. If you use something like a DigiRig or a MobiLink TNC4, these include both the audio cable and the PTT automatic button, all in one cable. The MobiLink, I think, works very well for a mobile situation, like if you're in your car and you connect your APRS to your phone. Works very good for that. But for a more permanent setup, I think you need something like a DigiRig for the TNC. So for my project, I'm sticking with the DigiRig. However, you can use anything you need. Let's jump onto the computer and start configuring the software portion of your setup. And now we jump to the computer. First thing you're going to want to do is download Direwolf by going to GitHub and finding the source. Uh, I'll have the URL in the description box. And if you click on Tags and Release, Scroll down, you'll see the latest version is 1.7, and scroll down, and you'll see x86 underscore 64. That is for the modern version of a computer. When it gets done downloading, you click Open File, and in this file will be this folder. You'll want to move this folder to wherever you want to run your direwolf at. For now, I'll just copy it to the desktop. And at that point, you've downloaded Direwolf and you have it. I'm going to rename it and get rid of the version number. That way the folder structure is always the same. Double click the folder and in here you'll see Direwolf. Uh, the executable is in here, right there. And then right here is the config file. So those are the two main things we're going to worry about today. Double click on Direwolf and it may ask you if you want to open it in Notepad and you just click yes. This here is the configuration for Direwolf. Now there is entire documentation on how to configure this, but today I'm just going to show you the basics to get a DigiPeter from iGate. Scroll down. This is where you will set up your audio device. And as we discussed, you need an audio like a, a DigiRig or, or a cable, which I'll show on the screen. Today I'm going to use a DigiRig to show how to set this up. Um, if It's fairly similar if you're using just a sound cable, but you won't be able to transmit. So if you see here, uh, my audio device is a USB DigiRig. So in order to get the DigiRig set up, all I have to do is take this out and it will use a USB audio device. So assuming that is the only USB audio device you have plugged in, then that will automatically function. Now if you scroll down, you'll see here uh, your call sign. Um, you would enter your call sign here. Uh, so if your call sign was N0CALL, -L, you would just type that in there. Now if you have the DigiRig and you're doing push to talk, then you'll want to this asterisk here and you go to the start menu and type in device manager and if you expand ports you'll see this com4 right here so since that is com4 you're going to want to update this to com4 
this specific line is what makes a digi rig work. If you don't have a digi rig, you can actually leave this out and uh, it'll be received only at that point. So scrolling down a little farther, this configuration is used for the ports of what you want to set up KISS for, which is like a virtual TNC. You'll be able to set up Pinpoint APRS or other software like that and be able to connect to it using this port number right here. So this configuration here is used for DigiPeter configurations or basically how to broadcast your DigiPeter's location out to RF. So if you are receive only, you can actually skip this step. This will let you broadcast your DigiPeter's location out to RF if you have transmit ability, such as with the DigiRig. Uncomment that, then this will broadcast every 30 minutes. Update your coordinates, your GPS coordinates right here so that it shows up on the right spot on the map. And then you would update your power height and gain for your setup. If it's just a cheap Baofeng, then watts it has, such as five uh, watts. This is height above average ground level. So if you look at a GPS on your phone and it shows that you're 700 feet, but your antenna is five feet off the ground, then you would put a five here because your antenna is five feet above the average ground level. And your antenna gain, I'm going to assume that this antenna has almost no gain. And this is a comment that you can put. Most people put, as you see here, the location. So we scroll a little bit more. And this is DigiPeter properties. So if you're setting up a DigiPeter with broadcast abilities, then this setting needs to be uncommented. So it'll broadcast out those packets. Now, if you plan on setting up an iGate, if this computer will not have internet where you're setting this up, then you can leave this blank. If you want your packets to be transmitted to the APRS IS service, then you would need to fill this out. This, just uncomment, right here is a different servers depending on where you're at. I'm in North America, so I'm going to leave that as default. And here is your login information for the APRS IS service and here we use no call. This is your SSID and your SSID basically says which device this is. Um, you can take that out but I wouldn't recommend it because I use with no SSID for the device that I'm currently using or the device that I use the most. So I'm going to leave this a dash 5. This here is your APRS IS passcode and there's various sources online where generate this passcode so this is a great source right here and you would just enter your call sign click get passcode and right there is the passcode copy and paste and go back and enter your passcode right here and that should get us logged in to the iGate so at this point you should be able to receive packets and transmit them to the APRS IS internet service if you want your iGate to show up on the APRS website, you need to also enable the P-Beacon sending to the iGate. These does not have to send as often because these are not going to be received over the radio. These are going to be received electronically. Now, if you have transmittability through a DigiRig, you'll want to enable packets coming from the internet to be able to broadcast to RF. In order to do that, you just remove that. That will allow your dire wolf to transmit packets to RF from the internet, which is very important in my opinion, so you can have a two-way conversation rather than just being able to transmit from your radio. Down here is the limit to the amount of packets that you can do in a one minute period and a five minute period. Uh, it does say this at the end here, this might be low for APRS Thursday. I am the only user a majority of the time for my internet gateway and I have found that this is definitely way too low so I usually set this to 15 and 25 way during APRS Thursday and times of heavy use I don't miss packets so from here we save we go to file and save and now we've got direwolf configured to run direwolf you can double click it and click more info and run anyway 
And after you click Dire Wolf, you'll see this start to pop up. At this point, our Digipeter is now connected and it's running. And since it's hooked up to our radio, if we receive a packet, it'll pop up here and it'll show the packet come through. One cool part about this is if you use Windows as your processor for this Digipeter iGate, you can actually hook up some software to it and it can actually work as a station as well where you can send and receive messages. There's several software that works well with Direwolf and you would use it as a TNC. I will say I feel personally most of the APRS clients are lacking in a lot of ways. This client will work really good for this, however it lacks in this. And there really isn't any that is the end-all be-all client that I've found to date. There are several to choose from and most of them work on different platforms depending on what platform you're using. On the Android side, I use APRS Droid which is actually one of my favorite applications out there but the map feature I think is lacking some. And if you wanted to use this with your Direwolf, you can actually use it as a TNC KISS server using TCIP and you would just enter the IP address of your computer and the port and then your phone will be able to connect to it and send and receive packets with your Direwolf TNC. On the Windows machines there's actually several options. There's APRSIS slash 32, there's UIView 32, Pinpoint APRS and YAAC and there's several more but most of those have actually stopped development. Pinpoint APRS is the only one that I can find that appears to still be in development, but it mainly only gets small updates and not major changes. I hope you learned a little bit from this video. I really enjoy setting this up and playing with it. For me, APRS is one of the coolest modes that there is on a ham radio because there's so many things you can do with it. You can use it for things like testing out your signal strength and how far you can reach and receive. And my hopes with you learning this is you can set up a Digipeter in iGate and you can expand the reach of your area and serve your community because there's always a need for an eye gate somewhere. As I said earlier, I live in an underserved area and my hopes is setting this up will help me and my community uh, when the other hams pass through. And I do plan on setting up permanently for that reason. I'd love to see y'all join in on APRS Thursday with your new eye gates.